Thank you for that uh, excellent session. And from one excellent session, uh, we move to another remarkable session. And probably one of the highlight, highlights, you know, of uh, YROC 2022, uh, learning about earning. So we have all the stalwarts of orthopedics. Uh, I'd like to uh, invite Dr. Ram Chadda and Dr. G.S. Kulkarni, sir, uh, to the dais. And our chairpersons for this session, Dr. Ambar Dekar and Dr. Raju Patak. Morning, everybody. As we await our chairpersons, Dr. Partak and Dr. Ambardekar, to please join us, I would also request the three panelists uh, in no particular order, but the order is uh, old, older, and oldest, wise, wiser, and wisest. So we have uh, Dr. Pichai Suranarayan from Chennai, originally from Mumbai. We have Professor Nandu Lad. Mumbai, 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 and Professor G.S. Kulkarni, Mumbai, and now Miraj. So we have a lot of gray hair, we have more gray hair, and we have all of us seated here to share what these three wise men have learned in many decades of their practice. We have two lines. One, which is the title of our discussion today, which is Learning Above Earning. So these three wise men are going to share those experiences where they've actually earned not in cash, but in kind, where patients have taught them something which they need to share with us. And finally, they will tell us why each one of them over the years has worked more for our outcome rather than income. I welcome our two chairpersons with their opening remarks. Hello. We would then initiate these three stalwarts sharing their experiences. The order that we would go is Dr. Suranarayan would make a presentation and then we would have an open house discussion followed by Dr. Nandulad, who would make a presentation, followed by an open house discussion. And finally, Professor G.S. Kulkarni making a presentation, having an open house discussion, and being the main convener, giving us a take home message thereafter. Thank you all for being here and stay on. Over to the chairpersons. Uh, welcome everyone. I would suggest it should be learning before earning. I think you should not try to uh, earn before you learn. Uh, the new trend is earning before learning. So I, I want to listen to all these stalwarts uh, clearing the misconception about orthopedic learning and earning. So I would request Surya Narayan to come and give his talk. A very good morning to the YROC organizers, Professor Chadda. And it's indeed very heartening to see all my teachers on the podium after a long time. Professor Ambarikar, Raju, my good old friend, 
Professor Lard, Dr. Kulkarni, I mean, what can be better than this? Just to be sharing a dais and a podium with all the stalwarts. Indeed, Raju, you rightly said there's a lot of gray hair here to earn. And Ram, thanks for putting this up together. I think I look at it as a philosophy. It's more than learning about earning. It's not a point uh, because these things grow. You start learning about when you start doing. I think money is uh, and the earning flows with time. But there needs to be some sort of definition with regard to where you focus all this time. I'm going to take a representative case first and then just go, let you go through and then we can probably discuss later on. This was about a 50-year-old gentleman who had presented in 2013 and then he had the index surgery by the great uh, Doyen, Professor Dolakia at that time. Dr. Lard would allude to this, this is a triad hip which was done. The lab profiles were normal, it looked like a very clear aseptic loosening. But if you look at the pattern of aseptic loosening and the cortical loss, I think there is something more to the story. But if you make it amiss, I think then you take it as a pure revision, what's the problem? So, being a novice, as a, a, a very naive, I just took for the exposure, there was an intense bleeding, very friable tissue right at the skin level. So I was wondering whether it's a malignant tissue. We abandoned the procedure, did the uh, arteriogram studies, and then we blocked the bleeders. And then in the meantime, we had taken a biopsy, but it was not a good because in view of the severe bleeding, it didn't show anything much at that time. We rushed in and then went off to dissect that segment, which was hardly doubtful. And then we put in a proximal femur prosthesis. To me, retrospectively looking back, this was the error one, that we didn't fully go into the, what the source and what the tissue is. And this reflected this. Patient was comfortable, of course, functionally. You can see the coils on the medial side. And the histology subsequently sent again was totally inconclusive. Year 2014, you find the progression in the radialus and lines on the distal side uh, was wondering, we thought it is fixed, though of course, most of the tumor processes don't have a great history if you look, them, look at them beyond five to six years. But even at within a year, having seen this, it sort of made me rattle on this. Uh, we looked at it, but uh, Again, just kept observing him for a little time because the symptoms are not so severe, but you could find some amount of sinkage, some periosteal reaction forming along the junction. So that let's, uh, gave the suspicion of some element of instability. The radiological changes continued to be progressive. The pain and discomfort continued to be progressive and he now started a little lurch on walking. We did the PET scans, did not show any huge hot spot as such to depict any infection or any activities. So depending or entirely relying upon just investigation sometimes take you on the wrong path and then you end up somewhere else. So the question again was, so I was trying to analyze mechanically in which case in functionally we didn't find anything when we saw mechanically, is it instability? And there is always this aspect we subsequently have learned is that the length of the stem versus the length of the proximal body has a play. If you have a very long proximal body, which is rather very heavy with the vitalium or the stainless steel, a short distal stem is a problem. There is a lot of uh, cantilever movement and they tend to rattle and loosen up very soon. So that now people have worked out and in the mechanics, the engineers are working out proportion of the ratios of the stem length required for stability. So that was lesson number two. So the error two basically here was the not calculating the ratios of the proximal body length and the stem length, which should be optimized for the fixation, whether you do cemented or whether you do non-cemented. So this was the picture with no progression. And then in error 2016, what we found was, again, this started loosening and getting into symptoms. So we said there's something that meets more than meets the eye. We changed the stem again. This is a picture post-operative where a longer stem was used with the proper cementation, but the symptom didn't subside. And what we missed was the fact that in medicine, sometimes you have a lot of intrigues that come. Like here, for example, the histology is inconclusive. The septic profile is negative. Otherwise, a healthy gentleman, where are we, is a question. 
Second point one could raise is why we did not change the socket after about 20 years. So that makes a difference because there's, we have seen that the isoelastic uh, cups continue to work for a long time, but at 20 years it's a good enough time where probably we should do. So these were the pictures, but the thing is the expanding soft tissue mass reappeared again. And within a short while, you found it just growing all over the place. Without a diagnosis, without a histology, it was again intriguing in a sense. It was there two, three years before we resected the whole thing, it has reappeared. Had a discussion with the oncologists, but they were not also not very clear. They said there could be features which are suggestive of a sarcomatous change, which seemed to be in order. But with this huge mass, uh, the patient was also getting fed up, not very, very reluctant. Uh, and we left it at this for a few more months. But time wouldn't go very soon because of the tissue instability. The whole thing fell apart and it dislocated, which now speeded up the need to intervene. We had an extensive resection with the help of the oncology group. We changed and entirely revised the thing. So the third revision was extensive resection by the oncosurgeons, then of course of, uh, the usual reconstruction of the socket with a trabecular shell with a cemented dual mobility, proximal femur prosthesis, and a mesh, mesh reconstruction. So this is just a few snapshots. Uh, TM shell with the evolutus uh, uncemented uh, dual mobility was put. To reattach the abductors, we used the uh, um, Marlex mesh and we did this. This is the picture now, was at 2017 and 2018. But the saga did not end there. Unfortunately, through all these surgeries, he, at last we caught up with the infection in 2018. And he had a single repeated debris. But at this time, due to some reasons, uh, I could not proceed with the treatment since I was away. And one of the colleagues and friends uh, whom I uh, admire here, in Mumbai, actually, I talk, took him, asked him to take over the case and if he could help us. Repeated debridement and spacers were done, multiple drugs, fungal infections treated, uh, but it took almost three years to get hold of the infection. And presently, this is the status. After two or three rounds of spacer implantations with antibiotics, systemic therapies, and systemic chemo. So this is where we have ended now at the end of six to seven years. And this is, these are the pictures, a significant deficit, proximal bone situation and acetabulum, which is this. Just the other day, um, just before coming, I just messaged the gentleman, I like, keep in touch. I just asked him, how are you? And he said, sir, I'm fine now and I have no problem, but please operate me if possible. We can well understand the morbidity of such a situation. So I think we, I said we certainly shall have a look at it. It just says, patients come to us with a hope and a faith and we can't betray them and we cannot give up. It's very frustrating. It is not the matter of what you earn out of the case or it never occurs to you because you are constantly thinking of how best to get or how fast to get him back on the feet. And that's the only thing that drives you to keep doing and taking up these challenges. Of course, sometimes you are left with the constraints of the earn, earn, uh, spending from the other side, not the earning from me, but the spending from the patient. That's where the empathy comes and you try to help them as much as you can. But uh, so the learning, I think in this situation or a case like this was plenty. What all things I could have done better? There's the first question that comes to me could, right at the beginning, probably discussion with the peers and a detailed review. Though we had small meetings, it could have been a broad base with multiple opinions so that probably we could think out of the box. Probably the polyethylene, uh, the cap, cup should have been revised since it's been inside for a long time. And always x-rays do not reveal all. We all look at osteolytic lens, we all look at dislocations, we all look at all the other features, radiologic, but there is much more to the story. So it is very, very imperative that probably we all completely evaluate with all the available modes, if necessary, whatever that takes for you to come to a conclusion and whatever it takes for you to get a sort of a good outcome of this. I just realized from this case after seven years and still running, now I'm thinking of what the final next thing we do to do. You realize there is something controlling from the above to in all these cases. With all these interventions again and again and again, 
at least I'm still not medically gone into a medical liability with this gentleman who has been extremely kind and nice. So there's a goodness from both the sides which should be done. The patient is fortunately healthy otherwise, uh, not being totally mobile, but he's moving around with a walking frame. And with all this, after three years, we have got some hand on the infection and the infection is controlled. So I think, uh, I'm sure my senior teachers would have even more wiser words on this, but what I felt was, I think we have to be modest, we have to be straight, we have to look at all the other aspects. I think that earning comes, what you do or not with time, earnings always will come. But the focus needs to be purely on the outcome and see what is best. Our own old things, uh, may not work. Things keep changing at all the times and updating ourselves with what's new, what's good and talking to people without being skeptical. Your failure is part of all of us and we have got to accept it. Talk to our colleagues, talk to our seniors and everybody. Get the best inputs before you plan a final output. Thank you. Uh, I think we have about three minutes uh, before we go to the next speaker. So, anyone in the audience having any question, any suggestions, please? Please raise your hands. Any comments from... Suri, I think uh, when he came to, he already had listening a lot of proximal femur, right? No. First x-ray you showed. Yeah, that was an erosion. Yeah, erosion. Because of the mass which was all around the tissue. See, what I have found is the history of this triad stem has not been so bad with me. Correct. But I think the problem comes that our patients in India, if they don't have pain, they don't report. If they report, this disaster could have been averted. I do agree that isoelastic stem failed, cup remained. Rob Mathis cup remained. Agreed. And wear rate was very less. So I think by the time he came to you, his frogal femur was gone. But I have a feeling that all the young people must insist patients come for follow-up every year. For first three years, every two years, for next three years, they must come. Because then this sort of thing could have been averted. This is what I have followed. And then when you maintain a good record, I have seen that disasters become less. I think, that, may I add a statement, a sentence? I think uh, this is a clear lesson to all pe people doing joints, is once your patient is always our patient, for lifelong it happens. Sometimes for the good, sometimes for the not so good. Uh, now I uh, request Dr. Lard to give his presentation. Dr. Ambedekar, Dr. Patak, my learned colleagues, I thank the organizers for inviting me. I'm an old person. A case which I learned more than I earned. I show you a 48 hour mold, a fisherman, and motorbike accident three days ago and had no treatment. He had some puttees. And if you see, he had a massive soft tissue injury. And see his fracture pattern. Now we have the pseudoarthrosis. This is an area where pseudoarthrosis is extremely common. So to think about it and plan very well. So my issue was not much of the bone. My issue was much of the soft tissues of two reasons, devascularization and possibility of revascularization. Analyze his fractures. He has a severe combination he has a lateral translation, gross instability, has a soft tissue compromise, but look at his mortis. His mortis isn't too bad. So I think always have uh, three looks at the x-rays before you decide anything. What would be the surgical plan? Now, as all of us think, uh, do a lateral pillar stabilization, 
temporary x-fix naturally your comminution medial loss so definitive fixation of the tbl medial fracture bone grafting primary or secondary or maybe synthetic bone so i thought about it i felt in this case we have to be very judicious and if i rush up can we have a problem i think that injury leads to further trauma to the already damaged tissues you need to devascularization of bone fragments because of surgery you have loss of vital bone inducing substance and you have increased chances of infection so what are the challenges look at the patient not at the uh, not, not at the x ray his ejection fraction was 20% he was diabetic and he had elevated serum creatinine so i said we have to be careful and he needs a primary medical care so what did i do i said that let me get it aligned and my experience shows that temporary k wire fixation in the metaphyseal junctional fractures to cross probably holds it naturally lateral part was not too bad so i put a lateral plate and put 2k wires in cross section i got fairly good stability i noticed that there was a medial bone loss the wounds later on showed though looked good but i was worried about it can i do the intervention and i said no i should wait I did see where I put a plate some amount of weight is that three weeks and I said I there to but, but today we have a possibility of collagen dressings and you should use this and I was very impressed that it did heal very well what happened the wound started healing he was very comfortable walking with crutches having seen this at the 6 weeks i removed the fixator and told him we should be doing surgery he says no sir thank you very much i don't want surgery i also discussed with the physician and he asked me it's wise if you differ it so i used the famous patellar tendon bearing functional cast so at 2.5 months post functional cast this was his position there was no infection and that medial bone loose bone you said was a sequestrum it was not a sequestrum interestingly you could see an anterior healing and a lateral healing so this point can i do a medial stabilization as i said patient and my physician colleague said if possible avoid it i want them this may not heal at 4 months look at what's happened complete anterior healing excellent lateral healing some defect on the medial side but clinically he was very good clinically he was very good so he removed that plaster at home and he came walking i was surprised the main was i was impressed with his gait a good patient whom you communicate is always a good guide to you so anything you should do should be acceptable to the patient not to the surgeon we use that this is acceptable no it has to be accepted to the patient so at 6 months you still see some defect but a complete osseous union did he restore to good function he restored to good function he started driving motor bike went on a ship again so not a very rich man i became wiser on two reasons i learned to talk to my patients i learned that i must discuss with my physician and i learned that 
probably together if you have patience perseverance persistent it pays lost money can be earned experience enlightenment forever and is a sure way to wisdom and this is lionel messi who for 10 years put on efforts and that's a reward is god i thank you for your attention thank you dr lad i would like to congratulate you on your excellent result for this and uh, i would like to ask you whether you would have done anything different in this respect i began I, he wants to know whether uh, the patient was right or you were right uh, you would have done I anything think, uh, probably I, patient teaches you so many things because i was patient patient i had patience yeah so i listen to wise counsel okay see what happens is many time we never practice we try to sell an operation to the patient modern shows this to your modern implants because my fear is we are driven by market forces today not that i was one of the person who believed that very strongly to begin with but i think he should balance all the technique technology patient our experience put together but good follow up and every time good check clinical check is very important don't rely on the express because that area is very sensitive area for pseudoarthrosis very very sensitive area but remember revascularization you should not touch the local healing process is superb and see the point of bone so it's junctional bone it will lay down a good quality bone and because he was walking that little you know stress produced an osteogenesis and it healed so i think truth is somewhere else surgeon must use an implant to help the fracture to heal that's my philosophy today people feeling that you use an implant and fracture will heal no it's a purely temporary process the plate fixation how you uh, do it dr lad i still remember my teacher dr baudekar saying uh, probably he had a good sixth sense which probably comes with your experience and procrastination gives you a answer to so many questions in this case you procrastinated because of your good sense and good advice from the colleague and probably you will ended up with good results if you had played it maybe it would have been a disaster you are right because he had such an extensive injury actually his motorbike fell on his leg so that crushing as i look back that local crushing to revascularize it were very important i think uh, you become wise and as you become old you tend to become more conservative thank you dr lal thank you I would like to invite dr kurkandi to narrate his experience dr ambedkar dr patel and friends during my long life what i have learned is one thing that is if you are academically interested if you have knowledge is perfect about your subject that you are handling money follows you don't have to worry about money if you are really academically interested and taking care of the patient to the perfect this is a 56 year old man one year old non union of subtrochanteric fracture we treated him with uh, dcs and it miserably failed this was in 2012 we learned from this case that dual implant worked here that we just added an anterior plate to this bone grafted and a leg screw and he had full function here dual implant worked this case stimulated us to study why how all about 
dual implants. I will show you that the force from T10 acts on the medial side. If you see the femur, you see the from head to head, it is on the medial side. 70% of the weight passes through the medial condyle of the upper end of the tibia. Now when there is a fracture, the compressive forces act on the medial side and therefore there is comminution and tensile forces act on the lateral side, therefore just a fracture. So the lateral plate acts on a tension band principle. Therefore, integrity of the opposite medial cortex is crucial. Both columns need to be stabilized. This is columnar dual implant concept. Both columns are restored by either a bone grafting, fibular strut graft, allograft or uh, from the body. And you can add a plate, but in the femur, medial side available only distally 10 to 12 centimeters. Therefore, we can add an anterior plate and nail buttresses both cortices. Simple fractures you can treat with simple implant. One implant that is nail or a plate can work in these cases, but in complex fracture need dual implants. In the femur, you can have commutated medial wall, subtrochantric fracture, shaft or distal femur, segmental fractures, non-unions. In tibia, Shajkar type 5 and 6, comminuted shaft, non-union, complex splenon. All these need dual implants. How dual implants work? Biomechanically, plate protects the rotational and axial stability. Nail prevents bending. So they complement each other. Dual implants are a super construct and union is assured. Types of dual implants are nail plus plate, nail plus X fix, plate plus X fix, dual plate or dual nail. Now see this case. This is a very interesting case. This patient, uh, adult, nine months old, non-union of the uh, shaft, which was treated by nail, which was a uh, wrong entry point for this nail. And we treated it with a compression plate and a nail. Here, the compression plate acts on the principle of compression method, that is absolute stability, and nail works on uh, elastic stability. So, this is a combination of compressive forces and elastic forces, elastic method. This is not accepted by AO. Uh, AO says that you should not combine these two uh, methods of fracture fixation because biomechanically and biologically they are different. But in India, we are using this recently for the last 10 years. I see conference in the many conferences that complex fractures are treated by a combining a compression plate and a nail. So uh, this is a uh, really needs a real uh, deep study. Now uh, Kodi Koji, Kojima in 1917 coined this word a combining uh, compressive method with absolute stability and elastic method with relative stability, what he calls it absolute fixation. This need, really needs deep study. See this case, uh, severely infected non-union was pouring from multiple uh, sinuses, multiply operated, came to us with, uh, we treated with uh, debridement and antibiotic nail and x -fix. Again, combination of the two, uh, il uh, Ilizaro gives compression and nail gives elastics. Again, we, uh, when the infection was under control, we treated with nail and a plate. This is a complex segmental fracture with comminution treated with long plate and a nail. See the union. This is a case of non-union of uh, neck femur and shaft. 
this was treated with a long stem prosthesis but it failed to unite so we had to add a plate long plate on this side combining the two methods again community subtrochanteric factor with osteoporosis i will run through the slides because i have to present long a large number of cases so long nail and a plate united but here the same thing failed because we used a short nail this is what is needed was a long nail so when we added a plate and a long nail uh, it united again comminuted subtrochanteric fracture nail plus plate union medial void needs plate and a nail now this is a severely contaminated uh, open fracture delayed presentation came after one week and internal fixation was risky therefore we used as lcp as an external fixator and added a nail it united complex proximal tibia uh, we added a dual plating union segmental proximal tibia again dual plating united this is a case of non union 7 months upper end of the tibia dual plating union segmental comminuted tibia uh, femur uh, single implant failed here you can see that the nail broke and went into non union therefore we had to add uh, dual plating and bone grafting singling united the 14 months old untreated non union dual implant with compression and singling bone grafting united shaskar type 6 note the intra intra articular fracture with uh, extension into the shaft dual plating union occurs so the take home message is for complex fractures at non union consider modern dual implants indian traumatologist should study this absolute fixation which is a very controversial topic we indians have a large number of uh, cases intelligent brains and we have but what is lacking is a publication so if we traumatologist combine and do a multi centric study of very big uh, high volume hospitals then we can teach the whole world so what is more important today is learning more than earning thank you very much uh we have just 2 minutes left any question last chance from the audience <coughs> dr kolkarni sir very short i saw oh hello sir here where where how oh, yeah so very good result dual plating wonderful very well accepted i saw in patient some patient there is right angle plate and there is parallel plates any study by you are in literature which is the best or it depends upon fracture configuration any mechanical study has been done result wide mechanic wise what is the question question is right angle plate or parallel plate which one is the best a parallel plating parallel plating is necessary for this some cases. cases i saw there is right angle plate as well lateral plate and then the anterior plate in different fractures okay that depends upon fracture configuration or is there any choice doctor so i share i uh, share my long ago when you do not have an interlocking we used to use that our punctured nail for lower third fractures and we used to use an anti rotation plate at the junctional fractures the question is on table stability you obtained by minimal intervention and see any gap fill it up you must ensure stability it's surgeon who uses a plate there is no standard and cook book what it does today you get a pillar stabilization both for comminuted fractures 
where muscle forces now he showed a lot of cases are reverse oblique fractures here the question is not only fixation how do you balance the deforming muscle forces and rotation so surgeon decisions are on the table so implant you decide there is no cookbook there no research related to that adequate stability on the table and ensuring no bone defect uh thank you dr lard i think we are coming to the end of this session dr kulkarni's new idea is welcome and i think it will be dis uh, discussed extensively we should have a symposium on double plating and i think it is evolving it not yet proved yeah. so everyone would have a different opinion yeah. so i hope that next time there is a symposium on double plating yeah sure it is a so very thank you thank today the world is moving towards sliding plates don't disturb the tissues at all sir so but you are not worried about the reduction alignment in the rotation and this so so many of those cases we have treated where we slide at the place didn't open it only incision at the top and and same as shown union sir what he has shown is failed where initial intervention was not good so today if you really see world literature the sliding plate has solved lot of problem except for the reverse oblique fracture reverse oblique fracture i agree with him that you have got to use some medial implant anyway we come to conclusion of this session i uh, hand you. over the mic to dr ram chedda thank you so thank much thank you very much to the speakers uh see you next virok thank you very much thank you dr ambedkar thank you dr raju patak for chairing the session thank you professor g s kulkarni professor nandu lard and dr surya narayan i'm sure we learnt a lot and before i hand over the proceedings to the master of ceremonies i think the three lessons we learnt professor g s kulkarni taught us that as we progress we need to learn unlearn and relearn and that is the way forward path breakers like him are the people who have become path makers as far as professor lard is concerned he made a very important point that we should not sell an operation to the patient we should let the patient buy the operation and thank you very much sir for telling us that and it's extremely important today and professor surya narayan he said something which is very close to our heart and i quote Winston Churchill when he said success is not final failure is not fatal it is the courage to continue that counts thank you gentlemen for all being here